So you get a bit of string and you twist it a bit and that makes a siege weapon? Nah, it'll never work. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, this thing is deadly. Warning, this device was designed by someone of mentally dubious persuasion. Despite moronic issues, the creator has so far failed to name himself or others, but due care is strongly advised. Side effects may include maniacal laughter, a sudden superiority complex, or being unfriended by your neighbours. After the somewhat unexpected success of my little trebuchet, which frankly flung better than I ever expected, but was never really designed to do anything other than look the part, I took another jaunt down history lane and tangled togas with the Romans. It seems the popular weapon of choice back then was a catapult called an onager, which literally means wild ass, but not the kind you meet at the average office party. Think more like a kicky mule with anger issues. Whilst researching historical onagers, I stumbled across this brilliant recreation photograph on Flickr. From that, I designed my own 3D model, keeping that overall form, but adding a few personal twists to make it more printer friendly. But I still want to say a big thanks to the photographer and the amazing team that built that original machine. Brum, brum. This, my friends, is the Vogman Onager. It's free to download, easy to assemble, and amazing fun to use. The Onager was Rome's answer to how do we launch things at people we don't like, which was a surprisingly long list in their case. It was a torsion-based beast powered by rope and sweaty Italians that flung rocks, bolts, and especially their enemy's credibility across the battlefield. Not especially accurate, Pound for pound, it had a very impressive range and a refire rate that stopped would-be saboteurs getting too close. No doubt some of you will already be furiously googling whether this is technically an onager, a mangonel or your mom's potato launcher. But by classic Roman definition and most wargaming guides, it is an onager. And far more importantly, it's just a bit of fun and not meant to be taken too seriously. Created on a standard FDM printer, it's a must-have piece for anyone who enjoys a bit of crazy. So given the material restrictions, does it actually work? Of course it does. With the right tension and a suitably off-scale printed projectile, this thing can launch across a room. Roman torsion engines were typically powered by a skein of sinew or leather thongs. Now personally I don't judge, but I prefer not to ask why the Romans had access to leather thongs in the first place. Instead, I used 1mm thick and very strong leatherwork thread, which whilst benign enough to go unnoticed by even the most zealous health and safety inspector, when twisted tightly, it's capable of storing enough mechanical energy to have seasoned engineers quietly reaching for their brown trousers. A capstan-style gear and pole mounted on either side are used to twist the skein and build up tension. This setup also grips and suspends the arm, essentially acting as both a pivot point and an energy storing system. It's a beautifully simple premise, but don't underestimate it. Now, there are some wonderfully capable resins out there these days, flexible, tough, and even impact resistant. But honestly, I'm not convinced any of them are quite ready to handle the unholy amounts of energy storage and violent discharge that this build offers. That's not to say it's impossible, and in fact, I sincerely hope some adventurous resin manufacturers out there will give it a go and prove me wrong. And if they do, I'll be the first to show it off, possibly from behind safety glass. For now, I'm calling this an FDM-only print. Even so, it might surprise you to know that I printed almost all of it using normal basic PLA, specifically in my case, Sunlu Grey PLA+. There is need for a small amount of TPU printing, but I'll come to that in a moment. Printed on my Eligu Centuri Carbon, and thanks to a little over-engineering during the design phase, it's held up brilliantly. 
This build comes with an instruction PDF complete with printing recommendations. And they're called recommendations for a reason. Feel free to ignore them, but don't come crying to me when your catapult implodes mid-launch. You'll also find some handy Amazon links for the few extra pieces you'll need. As mentioned earlier, I've no doubt I over-engineered this Onager. But let's be honest, PLA is a fickle mistress, and I wanted something that was both easy to print and strong enough to do the job. The frame is solid. Laddered sides, diagonal bracing, and a chunky crossbeam spine to keep things from shaking apart. The arm lacks any aesthetic grace, but it's not there to look pretty. It's there to slam the crossbeam like a Roman tax collector. To absorb that impact, I added a TPU dampener. Now, I doubt any Roman artilleryman would recognize the term dampener, but they certainly used rope, animal hides, and whatever else they had lying around as a kind of medieval bubble wrap to extend the onager's life. I considered using rubber, but TPU lets us be precise. And paired with the angled crossbeam, it creates a strike angle of 70 degrees, which really helps this thing lob with some flair, or fear, depending on where you're standing. Now, some cheeky swines criticized the Paul and gear setup on my trebuchet, despite it being more for looks than function. But fair enough, it was super lightweight and not ideal. So this time, I knew I needed extra mass. Enter what looks like a wooden crate, the kind that might have held tools, wine, well, they were Italians, or maybe leather thong softening lotion. Functional and looking the part, it serves as a counterweight to prevent the gear slipping during tensioning. With that said, once enough torsion is applied, friction alone tends to hold everything in place, but the crate still earns its keep. I didn't bother with a winch on this model, there's scarcely enough room, and I figured the power in the arm would demand a winching system so beefy it would completely overpower the design aesthetic. So I left it out, and frankly, I don't miss it. As for the trigger mechanism, I initially considered something that would grip the end of the arm, but that posed a real risk of snapping the whole thing in half. So instead, I went with a twin levered approach. To make the twin levers move together, I added a gear to each, meshing them underneath. It's not perfect, but it does the job. I then took a spring from an ordinary pen and used it to keep the levers upright. Now this spring doesn't actually hold the arm back, that's still all about the torsion, but it makes the whole thing look as though it was designed by someone clever rather than a deranged YouTuber with too much PLA and not enough social interaction. Now it was during the filming of this video that I realized just how much kick these onagers really have, hence the wild ass nickname. Watch closely and you'll see just how much the pole kicks up when it fires. There's real potential there for the gears to slip. To date, they never have, but the potential is there. So I designed a discreet little safety pin to hold things firmly in place. You won't see that on the models in this video as that came later. As mentioned, there's an instruction PDF provided, but sometimes actually seeing things done is a little easier. So I'll quickly run through the assembly process here. Glue the four wheelbase parts to the underside of the frame. The triangular holes should face outwards. Glue the four wheel axles into the wheel bases if you want to add wheels, though this is purely optional. Attach the crossbeam to the main frame using plenty of two part epoxy adhesive. Avoid any air pockets. This join needs to be very strong, so let it cure for at least 24 hours. Glue the TPU dampener to the crossbeam using the crossbeam jig for perfect alignment. Once set, lash this in place with some leatherwork thread. This adds both strength and a little authentic touch. Cover the thread of two M3 18mm bolts with heat shrink tubing. Apply heat and trim to size. If you prefer, 
you could use tape. Insert the two reft bolts into the gear pieces. Use the skein jig to measure your torsion thread. Just insert two M3 25mm bolts or whatever you have to hand and loop your thread around the pins. 30 full turns. Now I did design and include a drill spindle, but personally I found it was more trouble than it was worth and I'd recommend doing it by hand. Insert the arm jig into the frame from underneath. Position the cross beam jig onto the cross beam. Insert the throwing arm into the jig. It should stand upright, pressing firmly against the TPU dampener through the jig. Insert each gear into its corresponding gear jig. Make sure that the bolt heads are aligned at the 12 o'clock position. Hang each jig on the correct sides of the frame. The arrow points to the front of the onager, so use this as a placement guide. You can then use a little tape to hold the jigs in place while you work. Now this is the bit you will hate and it's impossible to show you as my hands get in the way. Tape one end of the thread to the frame. Attach the other end to a length of stiff wire such as a paper clip or maybe gardening wire and then sew the arm in place by looping around both pins and the arm in alternative passes. It's a long boring process but a critical one. Keep it neat and keep it taut. This is the powerhouse of your onager. If it goes wrong, it just won't work. So take your time and get it right. Tie off the thread with a strong knot. Personally, I used a surgeon's knot. Remove the gear jigs, but leave the other jigs in place for the moment. Add a washer, either the provided print or an M3 steel washer if you have one. Place this against the frame and pin the pole into place using an M3 20mm bolt. Now don't over tighten this as the pole needs to pivot freely. If you find that the hole is too loose, coat the inside with a bit of two part poxy adhesive using a small stick. Just apply a light wipe and let it dry. Attach a spanner to each gear and rotate both sides forward equally. This is critical. I recommend turning no more than 180 degrees. Don't be tempted to over tighten it. I guarantee you'll be pleased with the power anyway. Carefully remove all the remaining jigs. Push the trigger arms into place. Start with the one that includes the spring loaded catch. It is a fiddly process, but if I can do it, anyone can. Both trigger arms should now mirror each other and interact with the firing arm. So there it is, the Vogman Onager, a proud addition to your growing arsenal of functional plastic violence. Use it to spice up a war game, dominate your diorama, or casually lob projectiles at your partner whilst pretending it's historically educational. Just like the trebuchet, this one's a free download and you'll find the links in the description. But for the real connoisseurs, I've also created a premium version and frankly, I adore it. The lines are cleaner and the woodwork's a little more realistic with added carvings by Roman carpenters who, let's be honest, were probably just stretching the job out into overtime. But what makes it really sexy are these two finishing options. If you want to go all historical, there's this wildly inaccurate but gulp paint worthy nod to Roman ingenuity. Or if like me, you lean towards fantasy and when you've been married as long as I have, fantasy is all you've got left, there's this horned skull version. I also pretted up the pole by replacing the lunchbox counterweight with a set of mock gears. There's a set with mysterious symbols for fantasy fans and a set with functional looking gears if you prefer. They're nothing but counterweights, but they look the part and you can always pretend you know what they do. You can grab this interchangeable premium version from Colts 3D and your support goes a long way towards funding future madness. It keeps me making cool stuff for fellow plastic flinging enthusiasts.
And more importantly, it keeps me from licking lampposts and shouting at pigeons, which could get me banned from the local park. Again. So if you like the trebuchet and wanted something with a little more power, this Onager is your next logical step into miniature chaos. Like, subscribe, and hurl that bell icon across the room for notifications. We're done with this one, so until next time, stay safe, stay sharp, and remember, when not in Rome, do what the Romans did and build an Onager.